seiner Kamera tätig. Er ist aufgewachsen in dem wunderschönen Städtchen New York City und jetzt lebhaft, naja, man kann es gar nicht sagen lebhaft, denn eigentlich ist er immer on Tour, aber aktuell, soweit ich weiß, in Thailand. Er hat schon viele, viele Orte, einmal in Südamerika und natürlich auch Asien, gesehen, fotografiert und dahinter steckt eine ganz besondere Geschichte. Deshalb bitte ich um den besten Fotokina-Applaus, den ich in dieser Woche jetzt hier je gesehen habe, für Greg Goodman! So you've got a, to a story to tell to the audience about your life, right? That's exactly right, Flo. Okay, wir müssen einmal fragen, ist denn jemand hier, der absolut kein Englisch kann? Keine falsche Scham? Alle können Englisch? Ja, ja, ich werde es an eurem Gesicht dann sehen, wenn ihr den Test so guckt. Also ich werde ab und zu ein bisschen übersetzen ins Deutsche, vor allen Dingen dann, wenn es um eine unserer neuesten Kameras geht, der NX20. Aber jetzt wünsche ich erstmal viel Spaß, viel Vergnügen mit Greg Goodman. Thank you. Guten Tag, everyone. As Flo said, I think my name is Greg Goodman and I'm a travel photographer and storyteller. Today I'm going to tell you a story of travel, photography, personal growth and love. I'm also going to talk a little bit about Samsung's new NX20 camera, which I think is a great compliment for any travel photographer to have. Along the way, you'll be seeing a lot of images I've taken over the years, and any ones you see from Berlin or Cologne were taken with the NX20. Other than that camera, I've had a lot of different ones in my life. Everything from film to SLRs, medium format, even my father's old rolly cord film camera from the 1940s. My favorite subjects are buildings, cityscapes, man-made objects, ruins, and the intersection of nature and humanity. This is probably because I grew up here in New York City, surrounded by buildings, cityscapes, and man-made objects. This is also where my story begins, in New York and on countless family vacations in the USA and abroad, my favorite of which was spending my fourth birthday on top of the Eiffel Tower. Fourteen years later, I moved to Washington, D.C., attended university, later got a job, and met an amazing woman named Carrie. We fell in love, but shortly after, she was accepted to a two-year volunteer program in Nicaragua called the Peace Corps. I thought about waiting around in America for her, but instead, I quit my job, sold my stuff, and joined her in her remote village. I originally had a return ticket for two weeks later, and I wound up staying seven months. But I'll get to that later. After she finished her service in Nicaragua, we backpacked across Central America by school bus, and then lived in New York together for a few years before deciding it was time for another trip. This time, we visited India and Southeast Asia for nine months before returning to America, this time California, to live in San Francisco. We also figured if we could travel so much together and still love each other, we should probably go ahead and get married. So, we did. And then we decided to travel again. Which brings us to now. We're on the road again, happy, married, loving life, and living in a city in northern Thailand called Chiang Mai. We spend our days eating delicious Thai food, getting to know the culture, and working on the things we're most passionate about. For me, they usually involve some form of travel photography. But what does that actually mean? Travel photography is about giving the world a way to experience the rest of the world. It's about breaking down cultural stereotypes and fears and finding beauty in all the different ways people do the same thing. Another thing I've realized is that all people, it doesn't matter where you're from, where you are, or where you're going, we all have the same exact core responsibilities and needs. What fascinates me is all the different ways these things can look the further I get from home. Things like sleeping, getting from here to there, communicating, working, and eating, which in Germany looks like this, but in Lao can look like this. Taking all of these images and putting them together has really given me a clear view of these universal needs. What I wanted was a fun way to present it other than a slideshow. What I came up with is the Symmetry Project, a graphical exploration of how our daily lives are mirrored across the globe. Basically, I spent a lot of time going into my travel photography archives and categorizing them by looking at what, not where. For instance, this is a payphone. 
It doesn't matter that it's located in India, or Berlin, or Sacramento, California, or Bangkok, Thailand. All that matters is that these images combine to show the universal need of communication, which, in the symmetry project, looks like this. I call this one 25 cents local calls. Being a travel photographer means I have a lot of gear. Camera, lenses, tripod, charger, laptop to look at it all, extra filters, you name it, I've got it. No big deal when you're at home, but when you're on the road all the time, it's really big and really heavy. This is my camera bag, and it's bigger and heavier than everything else I travel with combined. For years, I've actually been saying to Carrie that I want something a little bit lighter to take with me when we leave the guest house. Now, with the NX Zwanzig, I have it. Oh, Zwanzig, also. Der erste große Vorteil unserer NX Zwanzig ist natürlich einmal das Gewicht. Man hat das gerade schon gesehen, normalerweise ist Greg immer mit so einem Teil hier unterwegs gewesen. Das heißt, ein riesiger Rucksack, vollgepackt mit Equipment, um eben professionelle Fotos machen zu können. Mit der NX 20 ist das alles Geschichte von gestern. Das heißt, wir haben die meisten Zubehörartikel schon innerhalb der Kamera drin. Links auf der Seite könnt ihr sie gleich ausprobieren und ihr könnt sehen, wie leicht sie ist. So, as I said, I was in America, Carrie was in Nicaragua. This didn't really work for me, so I decided to join her. Before going to Nicaragua, I had only lived in big cities. They usually had at least a million people and very tall skyscrapers. Meanwhile, Mura, located in the north of the country, had 700 residents, was a three-hour bus ride from the nearest phone, internet, and even supermarket. This was the house we lived in. And this over here was our bathroom, which made it a little bit interesting if we had to go in the middle of the night. This was our shower, and by shower I mean planks of wood that I stood on, took buckets of freezing cold water, dumped them on my head, and tried to get the soap off as fast as possible. This gentleman was my next door neighbor, Nayo, who over the course of my seven months there really became like a second father to me. In this photo, he's teaching me how to pick frijoles in his finca. What amazed me most about my time down there was it really helped me redefine my comfort zone. I realized a lot of things about myself, especially that I didn't need all of the things that I had come to rely on and still do love back at home. I was out of my comfort zone, I was living the simple life, and I loved every minute of it. So meanwhile, when I left Nicaragua, Carrie had one year left on her service. I went back to New York, lived with my family, spent some time with my friends and got a job, and then as soon as she was done, hopped on a flight back down there, where we proceeded to go by school bus across all of Central America, finishing in Mexico. Along the way, we pushed fear aside and learned to scuba dive in Honduras, gazed out and hiked volcanoes in Guatemala, listened to traditional marimba music in Belize, and got to know a local family in El Salvador. What amazed me most is that regardless of everybody we met situation in life, they all had the largest smiles for us. Which, in the Symmetry Project, looks like this. Here, this lovely lady would be my wife, Karen. I'm extremely proud of the fact that I grew up here. Roosevelt Island is a small island smack dab in the middle of New York City. It's 250 meters wide, four kilometers long, and by far my favorite place on planet Earth. It's also where Carrie and I went to live after our trip to Central America. If you ever find yourself in New York, you have to visit, and when you do, take this, the aerial tramway. It's a cable car that goes from Manhattan over the East River and to Roosevelt Island in what I think is the most unique form of transportation in the entire United States. Also in New York City are my beloved New York Mets baseball team. I've always wanted to take a photo that was high quality enough and big enough to put on my wall. I didn't want a poster and I didn't want a photo that someone else had taken. Taking this image is actually why I purchased my first DSLR in 2008 and it also still hangs on my wall today. In the years since, I've traveled to nearly half of the baseball stadiums in America with my camera taking photos. I mean, what could be better? I get to see my country, I get to watch my favorite sport, and I get to do photography. 
Next season, I want to take my NX20 with me and using its HD video capability and my 18 through 200 zoom lens, I can start out with a wide shot like this and finish out with a nice close shot of the action on the field, which will look really good on my YouTube. Greg is a riesiger baseball fan. Man muss dazu sagen, Greg, baseball in Germany is not bad. I, I understand. It's kind of like football in America. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Also, we have natürlich <laughs> unsere deutschen Fußballmannschaften. Einmal natürlich beispielsweise Dortmund oder Schalke. Und die haben natürlich auch großartige Stadien, die man so aufnehmen möchte. Ich zum Beispiel habe auch so ein ähnliches Bild zu Hause an der Wand hängen. Das Besondere an der NX20 ist aber, dass wir nicht nur solche Weitwinkelaufnahmen machen können, sondern wir können auch mit Hilfe unserer verschiedenen Linsen, die wir draufpacken können, solche Aufnahmen als HD-Video abspeichern für zu Hause. After two years in New York, we had saved up enough money that we wanted to travel again. This time we booked a one-way ticket to India and had no plans other than to explore our world and to get to know different ways of life. It started with a three-month whirlwind adventure through India. From the deserts of the north to the southernmost tip and back up the east coast, we saw it all. What amazed me was how complete beauty and utter chaos could coexist side by side. Pretty much every day we were out was a test of my patience, and on the majority of those days I actually passed the test. My absolute favorite experience was the two weeks we spent here. It's called Sedona Forest, and every day we woke up at dawn, worked on the land, got to know ourselves, created a sustainable ecosystem, and much like in Nicaragua, I really just surprised myself at how outdated my comfort zone was. Next, it was off to Sri Lanka at the tail end of a decades-old civil war, and we pretty much had the entire country to ourselves. Then, in Bangkok, we arrived to find red-shirt protesters burning buses and making Molotov cocktails. Rather than flee, we actually found ourselves behind enemy lines, getting to know the protesters and understanding what they stood for. Just like everything I'm talking about today, there's lots more stories and photos on my website, adventuresofagoodman.com. After Thailand, we went to Malaysia and gazed out at the skyline, hiked this volcano in Bali, and then went back to Thailand to do a little jungle trekking and scuba diving. At this point, I also want to talk about how we backpacked. Our whole goal was to get to know local people and local cultures. To do this, we couldn't very well stay at five-star hotels. Instead, we found ourselves in local guest houses like this. Very simple, bare bones, but it's all we needed, and it really gave us a chance to get to know not only the guest house owners, but our fellow guests. As for bathrooms, squatty potties were the norm, and for showers, piping coming out of the walls. On occasion, it was hot water, but usually pretty cold. No separation between the two, and quite often, this was shared by every resident of the guest house. So why do you have a picture of my bathroom? I don't even know what to say to that flow, you got me. <laughs> when it came to food, we ate at places like this. Very local eateries that just had tables and places to sit. My theory is, the less money a place spends on decor, the better the food's gonna be. Which, in the Symmetry Project, looks like this. We've got kitchens, indoor and outdoor eateries, food carts, and an assortment of foods I've eaten ranging from delicious to average to crickets and frogs. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Yet another way we got to know the local people was to ride alongside them on public transportation, like this rickety school bus that we used to get ourselves across Lao. Then it was off to Cambodia where we watched the sunrise over Angkor Wat before busting up the Vietnamese countryside and getting to know that country. One of my absolute favorite and most terrifying experiences in Vietnam and my life was teaching myself how to ride a motorcycle in busy Ho Chi Minh traffic. Finally, it was back to Thailand one last time before making a brief stop in Hong Kong on the way home to gaze out at their beautiful skyline. Then, back to New York, where we have our own beautiful skyline. At this point, Carrie hopped on a flight and went back to California while I packed everything I own in my car and drove across America on Route 66. For 13 days, I was completely by myself, which was an amazing experience and allowed me to really reflect on the previous nine months of travel and to gain a better appreciation for the vibrant history of my own country. 
Then five years after I left Washington, D.C. to move to San Francisco, I arrived and was fortunate enough to get a job working at a fine art photo printing lab called Dickerman Prints. There I learned the value of megapixels versus sensor quality. For instance, every day someone would bring this in, or something that looked like this. A very low quality image, but they wanted a very large size print of. Now, I did it if that's what they really wanted, because that was my job. But it didn't ever look good. Another thing I saw a lot of was this, which is called banding. It's sort of a circular pattern that appears in the skies of images that are heavily post-processed, but don't have enough data in them. With the high quality megapixels and sensor in the Samsung NX20, I'll never see this or this again. Das sind die beiden Hauptaspekte bei jeder Kamera. Wir haben einmal Megapixelanzahl in der NX20, 20,3 Megapixel Intus und vor allen Dingen Qualität des Sensors. Das, was wir hier wunderschön sehen können, und das hat der Greg auch gerade super erklärt, das ist das sogenannte Bending. Das heißt, man nimmt eine Aufnahme auf, ganz normal, möchte sie dann im Nachhinein bei Photoshop oder was auch immer bearbeiten. Das Problem ist, dass das Bild zu wenig Informationen bietet. Also die, die Datenquelle ist nicht ausreichend genug, um bestimmte Filter drüber zu legen. Das, was dann passiert, sind solche Bildartefakte, die wir hier sehen. Oder wenn man zum Beispiel zu wenig Megapixel innerhalb der Kamera hat, dann ist es natürlich schwer, ein Bild immer größer zu ziehen. Dann wird es immer verpixelter, wie man das hier sehen kann. Die NX20 hat beides. Wir haben einerseits eine extrem hohe Sensorqualität und eine hohe Megapixelanzahl. 20,3. Das heißt, solche Aufnahmen sind Geschichte. Thank you. So as photographers, we all try to get the image right in camera. But as a travel photographer, I generally have one or two days in an entire city, and there's no time to stop. I used to say, oh, it's okay, I'll come back later and get the shot. But that never happened, and then I didn't have the shot. So now, regardless of the sun, the sky, the shadows on the building, or anything else, I make the best of what I can with what I have, and then I do a little digital photographic art. Hidden in high-quality RAW files are all sorts of colors, details, contrast, and information. It's no different than a film negative used to be, and using the digital darkroom, I can bring all of that out to create something new. It's what I call sort of a reimagination of my memory of the scene, or how I wished it looked when I actually was there. Samsung invited me to Germany because I have a travel photography website. It's called adventuresofagoodman.com, and if I had to sum it up in one sentence, it's a virtual trip around the world and the online magazine of my life. In 2004, it looked like this. Simple photography website, static, hand-coded, no bells or whistles. Today, it looks like this. It's a complete digital archive of my life of travel. Through photo galleries, stories, and multimedia presentations, I hope to inspire the visitors to my site to want to go out and explore our world. But if for whatever reason you can't, at the very least, I hope you learned something fun and interesting about somewhere new sitting at home. One way that I also do this is through full social media integration. As a travel photographer, sometimes updating my social media sites is more important than updating my actual website, because most people go to Facebook to see if it's been updated. When I'm on the go, this usually means taking a camera phone photo, slapping an Instagram filter on it, and putting it on my Facebook stream. It looks nice, I'm happy with this photo, but it also looks like everybody else's. With the NX20's built-in Wi-Fi and panorama mode, I can take this instead and upload it to my Facebook page minutes later, which will make me stand out in what's already a very crowded crowd. This is the law of the time. Mittlerweile sind soziale Netzwerke viel wichtiger als eigentliche Homepages, wo man etwas hochladen kann. Deshalb nutzt man sie natürlich auch. Vor allen Dingen, wenn man Fotograf ist, und das macht Greg auch, was im Vorhinein immer ein gewisses Problem da schon war, wenn man zum Beispiel unterwegs ist, dann hat man oft nur ein Kamerahandy oder sonstiges dabei und man möchte die Sachen natürlich direkt hochladen. Kann man ja machen mit jeglichem Smartphone. Es gibt ja mittlerweile auch Programme wie zum Beispiel Instagram oder ähnliches. Nur man muss sich das mal vor Augen halten. Instagram hat insgesamt, lass mich nicht lügen, acht, bis neun, äh, acht oder neun Filter, die man einsetzen kann. Gleichzeitig gibt es aber Millionen User, die dieselben Filter benutzen wie ihr. Das heißt, wenn ihr ein Foto macht und das mit Instagram bearbeitet, schön und gut, aber es sieht halt aus wie jedes andere Foto, was bei Instagram hochgeladen wird. Mit der NX20 könnt ihr solche Panoramaaufnahmen, wie man das hier sehen kann, ohne Probleme hochladen. Denn wir haben eine eingebaute Wi-Fi-Funktion. Das heißt, 
Ihr könnt eure Bilder, die ihr geschossen habt, direkt bei Facebook, Twitter oder sonst wo immer, wo ihr wollt, hochladen. Genauso, das Stichwort ist Cloud Computing. Ihr braucht im Prinzip gar keine Speicherkarte mehr. Ihr könnt direkt eure Bilder abspeichern in eure eigenen Daten. Since arriving in Germany, I've had a lot of fun using the NX20. And there's two features that I think are really going to be great for me as a travel photographer. My personal favorite is this, which is the auto level. I spend a lot of time looking through my lens, trying to get my horizon lines just straight. However, with the auto level, I look through, I make slight adjustments, and when everything's straight, these red lines turn green, done. Take a picture. Another one is this, my favorite shot is sort of the getting down low, pointing the camera up to get a dramatic effect. Well, with my other cameras, it's tough to see the screen. With the, with the Samsung NX20's movable AMOLED screen, I can actually just sort of tilt the screen and line up my shots. So, die letzten beiden Bilder, die wir hier sehen, wurden aufgenommen in Berlin und das sind auch gleichzeitig die letzten beiden Hauptfeatures, die wir euch einmal erklären möchten. Und zwar einmal, man kennt das Problem, vor allen Dingen, wenn man Gebäude äh, fotografiert, dann macht man ein Foto und im Nachhinein denkt man sich, okay, war ich da jetzt betrunken oder warum ist das Bild so schief? Man hat extreme Probleme, eine waagerechte Position der Kamera so von Natur aus zu machen. Deshalb haben wir innerhalb der NX20 eine kleine Funktion, die ungefähr so ist wie eine Anzeige in einem Flugzeugcockpit, die euch also verrät, wann ist die Kamera denn wirklich gerade. Das Besondere dabei ist, andere Kameras haben das auch, das gebe ich zu. Aber die NX20 übernimmt für euch komplett das Denken. Das heißt, ihr braucht nicht großartig gucken, okay, sind die beiden Linien, die ich jetzt habe, sind die ungefähr horizontal zueinander, sondern wir haben zwei Farben. Einmal rot, kein Foto machen und grün. Wenn die, wenn die beiden Striche grün werden, könnt ihr euch sicher sein, die Kamera ist gerade und ihr könnt das Foto machen. Dann die nächste Funktion, und das ist eine sehr, sehr praktische Funktion, das Display. Man kennt das, digitale Displays gibt es ja mittlerweile zwar fast an jeder Kamera, aber die sind meistens fest eingebaut. Das heißt, wenn man Bilder machen möchte, wie zum Beispiel aus dieser Perspektive oder von oben oder wie man es auch immer haben möchte, da muss man sich meistens immer noch verkriechen. Man muss auf den Boden gehen, man muss entweder auf das Display gucken oder durch den Super. Bei der NX20 könnt ihr das Display komplett ausklappen und drehen, wie ihr möchtet. Das heißt, solche Fotos könnt ihr ohne Probleme machen, alles mit der NX20. Got it all. So wirklich. So what's next for me? That's, that's the big question, isn't it? After Kodokina, I'm returning to New York for a little while, spend some time with friends and family, then going to San Francisco, spend some time with friends and family out there, and then Carrie and I are hopping on a flight back to Thailand. That said, I don't actually have to go anywhere. One of my favorite parts of working online and being a travel photographer is my life is extremely flexible, and I firmly believe that if you follow your dreams and your heart, opportunities will present themselves. The opportunity I'm most excited about and proud about right now is the Symmetry Project. It's actually completely new, and Photokina is the first time I'm presenting it to the world. So you fine folks are amongst the first people to ever see these pieces. The final one, which you've probably been looking at this whole time, is Taxis of Southeast Asia. It explores our universal need of getting from here to there. You could walk, ride a bike, take a bus, fly, it doesn't matter. Sometimes the easiest way to get from here to there is to hail a cab, which in the Symmetry Project looks like this, or that. It's worth noting that the Symmetry Project is actually designed to be a series of large format, limited edition photographic secrets. That's pretty much it for my presentation. I want to thank you all for listening. I hope that something here has inspired the wanderlust in you. And if that should bring you to Thailand, there's a contact form on my website. Please get in touch. Karen and I love visitors. We'd love to show you around. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to Samsung for inviting me here to Photokina. It's a huge honor, and I've had a great time getting to know the NX20. And over there behind my camera, taking the video of me, is a series of business cards featuring some of my absolute favorite images from my presentation and my travels. Please take one, take two, take all of them. I'm very proud of them, and I would love to share them with you. So with that in mind, I say don't go to Peter Set, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will leave you with a slideshow presentation of some of my favorite photos from Germany with the NX Hunting. Okay. Vielen Dank, thank you very much. Great, good man. Yeah, okay.
Der Greg wird euch natürlich hier noch an der Seite der Bühne für Fragen oder sonstiges zur Verfügung stehen. Er ist ja noch ein bisschen hier und er hat es gerade schon mal gesagt, da ist ein kleiner Tisch. Da sind seine Visitenkarten drauf und das Besondere ist, jede Visitenkarte hat ein eigenes Motiv. Es sind seine Lieblingsmotive, er möchte davon nichts mehr mit nach Hause nehmen. Deshalb nimmt sie euch einfach, da steht unter anderem natürlich seine Internetadresse www.adventuresofagoodman.com drauf. Und ja, das sollte jetzt erstmal von hier gewesen sein, von unserer Bühne als Samsung. Aber, liebe Leute, es hat...